Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to show you how I made these aluminum paw prints. Someone reached out to me and asked me if I could make these for them. So let me get into how exactly I did it. They gave me an SVG file that I used to cut out the pattern on my CNC router. I'm cutting polystyrene XPS styrofoam. I'm going to be doing a process called lost foam casting and using polystyrene XPS is the best foam to use. After the carving was finished, I removed it off of the table and I was able to just easily pop out the centers. Now in order to get aluminum into the paw print, I'm going to have to glue on another piece of styrofoam right onto the top for where the aluminum is going to flow into the pattern. For this, I'm using Alina's Fast Grab Tacky Glue. I'll glue the other piece of foam to the paw print and let it set for 24 hours. I made six of them. I mean, who's ever happy with just one? After 24 hours, I then apply some joint compound to the paw prints, thinned out with water. Then I let that sit for another 24 hours. Now that the paw prints are ready to be cast, I'm going to choose what type of aluminum I'm going to be using for today's melt. And I'm choosing the pull tabs. That's right guys, I melted a bunch of pull tabs and cast it into solid ingots. I'm also going to add some aluminum can ingots into the mix. I'm going to put these aluminum ingots inside of my 12 kg crucible. And unfortunately, it's not quite big enough to add the last can ingot into the mix. But that's all right. I'll add it later. Now it's time to melt these things down. I'm going to just place the crucible into my Viver 12 kg propane furnace, light it up, and get the fire started. While I wait for that aluminum to melt down, I'm going to make my Lost Foam Casting Flask. This is actually half of one of my wooden flasks that I use for green sand casting. I thought it would work great for these because these are very shallow casts that I'm doing today. I'm going to first fill the bottom of the flask with about half inch to three quarter inches of sand so I can just easily put right on top of that sand with my five paw prints. That's right, five guys. I did not have enough to put all six in here. If you're new to my channel and this is the first time you're seeing this, this is called the lost foam casting process. I do this type of casting all the time. It's so simple, almost anybody can do it. You just have to fill the container with dry sand over top, completely covering the foam. Once filled to the top, vibrate the flask to get a better compaction on the sand that is surrounding the foam pattern. And as usual, I'm going to be using some soup cans to pour the molten metal into. This will help contain the molten aluminum so it doesn't flow all over the place. I have to give a shout out to at stevesrt8 because I just stole your idea on cutting the cans in half and taping them together. It worked out really good. The aluminum ingots are now molten and it's time to scrape away any of the dross from the top of the molten aluminum. Now I really debated on adding that extra ingot that I had, you know, the can ingot. I really should have, but I thought that I had enough aluminum and you'll see very shortly that I fell short in the amount of aluminum that I actually needed for this entire pour.
After falling short in aluminum, I am now going to add that can ingot into the mix. But before I do that, I'm going to preheat it on the top of the furnace. If you noticed in the beginning of the video, I only had four paw prints. And I have five paw prints in this casting flask. Well, that's because this one didn't come out good. And I really didn't think it was going to. That's because with the four other casts, it had to have made that sand really hot. Which had to have melted that foam. So, we'll see what happened in a bit. And of course I had more molten aluminum left over in the crucible, so I'm going to pour that metal back into a graphite ingot mold. To be honest, it looks like the exact same amount of aluminum I had in the last ingot. And now it's time to check out the paw prints and see how they came out. I saved this one for last because I just got done pouring and I needed to give it time to solidify. And as you can see, what happened was exactly what I thought would happen. Some of the foam melted prior to pouring. these paw prints finally cast, it's now time to cut off the extra aluminum and shine them up. Let me show you the tools I use to do it. Thank you. 
Well, that's it, guys. I just performed the lost foam casting process. Again, one of my favorite ways to cast metal. If you like this video, please smash that like button, comment below, and subscribe.